Hello and welcome to a new calculator tutorial for the TI-84+. Plus. Today we're going to be talking about confidence intervals, and specifically I'll be talking about confidence intervals with proportions, and how to calculate them with TI-84. Now, this is going to be a relatively short video in terms of the program, because it's pretty easy to access and pretty easy to work with. But I have a few uh, tips to keep you uh, working through them, and I also have a problem that I want to show you how it would be analyzed. So first, how do we access a confidence interval? Well, there's two different locations that we can do this, at least if we're talking about for z-scores, not if I'm dealing with the student's t-test or student's t-distribution. Both of them are going to be in the same place, and they're pretty easy to mix up. So this is one recommendation of be careful. So to access the confidence intervals, you want to go to STAT. And we're going to be dealing with some tests here. So we're going to go over to tests. Now, in tests, there's a lot of different options, and many of them can look very similar. You notice two SAM Z tests, one prob Z test, two prob Z test, two SAM Z int. They're very, very, very similar. The ones that we're going to be using, and the one that I'm going to be using specifically, is the one on part A here, one prop Z int. This is dealing with a Z interval with a one proportion, and it's going to be dealing with a confidence interval. So one proportion, Z, confidence interval. That's what this is talking about. A uh, one that some people accidentally go to is Z interval. I'm going to go to Z interval just so I can show you why it's not going to work with proportions or why it's not helpful with proportions. All right, so if I go to Z interval, which again, a lot of people think of, Z confidence interval makes sense. Now, data and stats, great. If I'm in stats, you notice this content. It's showing a standard deviation, showing a sample mean, showing an end value, so the number of us in our sample, and a confidence level. Typically, if we're dealing with proportions, we either don't have a sample uh, standard deviation or a sample mean, or we have to do some calculations for those. We would have to do uh, the standard deviation of the set, and for proportions uh, with confidence interval, that would be the square root of p times 1 minus p all over n. And then the mean would also just be your proportion value um, that we'd be calculating there, which takes some unnecessary calculations. If we just are just dealing with proportions, we don't want to touch this. If you're not dealing with proportions, this can be pretty helpful, particularly if you're dealing with data it's itself. But since we are dealing with proportions in this example, we're going to be using a different function. So we're not going to be doing uh, Z interval. And I'm going to quit out just to make sure I'm not still running that. Okay, so stat, go over to tests, and instead I want to run the one that's on A. The one that says one prob z int. I believe that's true for both 84s and 83s last that I checked, unless you have some other functions that have been imported. So one proportion z confidence interval. And this doesn't ask for much. It asks for an x value, it asks for an n value, and the confidence level. So the x value is the number of values um, that you found for your proportion. So not the proportion value. n then is the number of values in the overall set. The reason why you're not going to be putting your proportion here is because this will already calculate that. It'll do x divided by n to find your proportion, and it'll work with that. Otherwise, you'd want to put in your proportion, and n is 1, so it doesn't actually do that. But just keep p, uh, x, and n as they are, the number of values for, I guess, a success rate, if you think about it as binomial, and the number of values in the overall set, and the confidence level, which typically it defaults to 0.95. Alright, so pretty easy to plug in. I'm going to have a problem here on the bottom of the screen that I'm going to be working with this, and I'll read it out loud. A retirement confidence survey of uh, 1,153 workers and retirees in the United States, 25 years of age and older, conducted by the Employee Benefit Research Institute in January 2010, found that 496 of them had less than $10,000 in savings. Okay, so in this case, the important numbers are the 496 that had less than 10,000 and the 1,153 in uh, my overall study. All right, so a few questions of analysis here. Um, the first one says, obtain a point estimate for the population proportion. I'll deal with that in a moment. The first one that I want to talk about, though, is B. The one that says, verify that the uh, requirements for constructing a confidence interval about P are satisfied. This lets me know, should I even be working with this content at all? And we have two requirements uh, for confidence intervals. Either A, 
the original data is normally uh, distributed and it either has to it has to tell us that and in this case the example doesn't or i have um at least or i have less than five percent of my overall content and in here i have 1153 in my overall sample and since i'm looking at the entire united states of people that are 25 years of age and older there's millions of people in the United States. I think 1,000 is going to be less than 5% of them, even if I'm just talking about people 25 years of age and older. So it satisfies the requirements that I really need. Now, obtaining the point estimates and C that says construct a 95% confidence interval can all be done using one prop Z int. It'll calculate both of those things at once. So let's work with that. And making sure construct a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion of workers retirees in the United States 25 years and older who have less than 10,000. So that means we are using the 496 proportion. So that's going to be my value here, 496 out of my 1,153 people. And I'm looking at 95% confidence, so 0.95. Then I'm going to calculate that. And there we go. We have our confidence interval from 0 0.4016 up to 0 0.45876. That's my confidence interval. And I have P hat, which is 0 0.43018. They got that by doing 496 divided by 1,153, which, again, you can do by yourself, but one prop Z and does it at the same time as doing the confidence interval. So I just calculated them at the same time. So there we go. We have our confidence interval and we have our proportion or our uh, point estimate proportion. Great. So that gives me one prop Z int. Now, the last thing we want to do is kind of have an interpretation of this and interpreting the confidence interval is very difficult at times. The more you get used to it, the easier you uh, will remember the wording on this. The best way is that you want to talk about how confident you are. In this case, we have a 95% confidence interval. So we'd say that we are 95% confidence or we are 95% confident that the population proportion mean of the, let's say, what is this? Of the workers and retirees in the United States, 25 years of age and older. So that group is between 0 0.4016 and 0 0.45876. So we are 95% confident that the population proportion of the workers and retirees in the United States, 25 years of age and older, that have less than $10,000 in savings is somewhere between 0 0.4016 and 0 0.45876. That's the, probably the best way to read the confidence interval at this point. So... Um, that's it for now. That's just what I wanted to talk about how to deal with confidence intervals um, as they are with uh, Z scores and it's pretty easy to work with. I'm going to have another video that's dedicated to how to deal with T distributions, which can be a little bit more in depth, but this is typically all you really need. If you do need to find the specific Z sub alpha minus two or alpha over two or Z sub negative alpha over two, you can find that using second vers and working with inverse norm, which we have in a previous video, which helps you find the Z scores if you know a particular percentage. So nothing changes there compared to what we've already talked about. With that in mind, that's everything I want to discuss with confidence intervals at this point. Again, if you are looking for T scores, I will have another video out shortly that will discuss how to do um, confidence level and confidence intervals with T values as well. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below, or if you're one of my students, just come up and talk to me. Uh, with that said, I'll see you in another video.